I like Spurgeon. You know, have you ever heard or seen, <laughs> sadly, Gentiles? Wait a minute. What do you mean Gentiles? Well, Gentiles. Oh, I don't mean, like, the difference between a Jew and a Gentile. No, I mean what Jesus called Gentiles, or what Gentiles do. Are you acting, and do you do like the Gentiles do? Because you're a Christian, so you're really not a Gentile. But if you act like a Gentile, if you look like a Gentile, then maybe you've become a Gentile and you didn't realize it. Because what did Jesus say a Gentile was? He said Gentiles love to exercise lordship over one another. In other words, they had a system of government that always put someone in charge. But you see, in the beginning, because Jesus was always talking about, it wasn't always so. In the beginning, it was like this or that or whatever. And he, he explains it. So you can go back in Scripture and look it up. But... See, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to put you guys in charge and you're going to rule. But he said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, learn to be the servant of all. Because his rulership isn't the type of manipulation that we see Gentiles do when they put themselves in charge and tell everyone what to do. Because that's not the way it worked. Jesus said that he was going to cause maybe in Revelation a different way of interpreting this word because I've heard Chuck Smith say it this way that you can define it and if you look it up I do my own research and I already know what I know but you'll have to figure it out for yourself but instead of it being a kingdom or instead of it being priests and kings in the kingdom it could be a kingdom of priests in other words we're all equal and there isn't greater and lesser in the kingdom of God, except in the revelation that they feel or they shine or they are a brightness, but not in the sense of hierarchical authority over someone. In other words, you're not going to walk in the kingdom and, you know, God forbid that you're going to sit there and be, you know, sitting on a throne and you're going to be ruling over ten cities, you know, and you're going to make them do what you want them to do. How about you look at it from a different point of view that isn't Gentile related, but might be christian related or might be the way jesus sees things what if you were serving ten cities what if you were the one that was caring for and sharing with and being the servant to ten cities or one city or whatever that jesus was going to bless them with what if it isn't about being in charge as most much as it is discharging what god has shared in the love of god and the grace and mercy instead of exercising authority over each other i don't think that the early church really did what you think it did i think it was more of a cooperative thing and that if they didn't all agree and were in one accord they didn't do it and when they did they made mistakes and i think the book of acts will show you that but you see that's something that you have to find out for yourself with jesus because if you're a gentile your very nature is going to be like a type personality. You're going to want to go out there and win and conquer and stomp on people and take over and be in charge and be the one who, I did it my way, you know. But if Jesus is not going to share his glory with another, and if God is not going to accept any other gods except himself, then you might want to learn, eh, might not be mm, your name, eh, but it might be his name that we want to make famous and that the infamy would be for you to think that you're going to be something you're not because you really aren't because not only there but for the grace of god go i but you are just as evil and as corrupt as the person you see just god doesn't let you see that part on the inside that he's working to change and make and rearrange so you'll become righteousness but i don't think that you want to take the authority that you think you got because even jesus said hey I give my authority back to God the Father and let him do it. And even though he could do it himself, he would rather that the Father's will be done than his own. So you see, I don't think that you really want to be a Gentile as much as you might think you want to be. So in Spurgeon, he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Christ's reign in his church is that of a shepherd king. 
He has supremacy, but it is the superiority of a wise and tender shepherd over his needy and loving flock. He commands and receives obedience, but it is the willing obedience of the well-cared-for sheep rendered joyfully to their beloved shepherd, whose voice they know so well. They do it because they want to, not because they have to. Jesus has but to ask, not to demand. He rules by the force of love and the energy of goodness. Because they love him, they choose to please him, not because they have to, because they want to. His reign is practical in its character. It is said, he shall stand and feed. The great head of the church is actively engaged in providing for his people. He doesn't tell someone else to do it, he does it. He does not sit down upon a throne in an empty state or hold a scepter without wielding it in government. No, he stands up with his scepter, with his power, with his authority, and he washes his disciples' feet. The expression feed in the original is like an analogous one in the Greek, which means to shepherdize, to care for, to be involved in, to participate with, and to provide for. To do everything expected of a shepherd, to guide, to watch, to preserve, to restore, to tend, as well as to feed, even to carry the young. His reign is continual in its duration. It is said, he shall stand and feed, not he shall feed now and then leave and leave his proposition. In other words, he doesn't just do it, say it, let you go on with it and takes care of it yourself without himself being the one who does stand and feed in the strength of the Lord from Micah. His eyes never slumber and his hands never rest. His heart never ceases to beat with love and his shoulders are never weary of carry or of carrying his people's burdens. For he said, come unto me all you, not I will give you the authority to go out and do in my name. Because he warned that those that would do marvelous things and works in his name without him he would say, depart from me, I never knew you. Though they had the ability, did they have the reality of him telling them to do what they did? His reign is effectually powerful in its action. He shall feed in the strength of Jehovah. Wherever Christ is, there is God. Whatever Christ does is the act of the Most High. Oh, it is a joyful truth to consider that he who stands today representing the interests of his people is very God of very God, and to whom every knee shall bow. Happy are we who belong to such a shepherd, whose humanity communes with us and whose divinity protects us. Let us worship and bow down before him as the people of his pasture, and let us not be as the Gentiles do to exercise lordship over one another, but rather let us prefer one another over ourselves, that we might lift them up, even as he preferred his Father's will, and lift us up to his Father. Can we not be like Jesus? and become more like the Son of God than pretend to be like man and the Son of Men? I would rather be the Son of Man and the Son of God and serve one another in love and choose to obey, not because he told us to, but because he asked us to. So we choose how we determine what that will be fulfilled in us today. It's your choice. You can do it the easy way or do it the hard way.